Hello, and thanks for tuning in to the Glossy Podcast. I'm your host, Jill Manoff, and today I'm thrilled to be sitting down with Jonathan Simkai, founder and designer of his 15-year-old namesake fashion brand. Next month, Jonathan will be returning to New York Fashion Week with some fun surprises. Plus, his brand has been busy expanding its physical presence by opening stores. I wanted to ask Jonathan how the brand has continued to grow despite taking on no outside investments. I also wanted to learn how he remains inspired season after season, though I know he literally dreams up dress designs. Welcome, Jonathan. Thank you so much, Jill. Thank you so much for having me here. And it's such an honor to to be here and to share my story with you and um, your audience. So um, really grateful and excited to, to chat with you. Oh my gosh, you as well. Tell me where you are today and what what am I seeing behind you? Is that spring summer collection over there? <laughs> yes, this is uh, part of the spring summer uh, collection behind me. I'm actually in my atelier, my studio in uh, West Hollywood. Um, we are a Los Angeles based uh, brand. We started the brand in New York, but decided to to move here, um, you know, six years ago. So our atelier is based in LA, and that's where I'm talking to you from. Oh my gosh. I want to, I want to dig into that a little bit throughout this conversation. You kind of have a theme of doing things your own way and experimenting and doing what works for your company. Obviously 15 years in, you have this great longevity that's worked to your advantage. Um, Let's start on, on a fun note. I don't often have kind of Um, folks who are both business-minded and creative-minded on the podcast, but um, love the talking creative side of things. Let's talk inspo. What was I referring to? You told me that you're dreaming in dresses, (laughs) but I want to know where else you're getting inspiration as well. Um, Yeah, I get inspiration from so many different places. And um, it's always a question that like, you know, sometimes I love answering the question, sometimes I dread the question because I don't always know where my inspiration comes from. Um, sometimes I will be sitting in Paris and I'll see a really, you know, um, beautiful person walking by in a really interesting outfit and and that'll make me think of something. Or sometimes I'll be, um, you know, in store, uh, working with clients and, um, they'll be like, oh, I wish you did this in another color. Or they'll say, I wish the skirt had a little bit less volume or I wish it had more volume. And then it like evokes an idea. Um, sometimes I'll, you know, you mentioned the dreaming dresses. It's very true. Sometimes I'll literally be sleeping. This actually happened to me last night um, with footwear, but um, I'll just like in a dream, see a pair of shoes or a dress. Um, and, you know, sometimes I'll wake up and, and I'll just jot it down or write it in my notes on my phone to try to remember what it is that I saw. Um, and sometimes I don't, you know, so I always think about like, what are the dreams that I didn't wake up and, and remember, like cause I, yeah. I, someone told me that you only remember the dreams if you wake up in the middle of them and the ones that you sleep through, you don't remember. So, uh. so I, I heard that. So it kind of like haunts me. And I was like, oh, I wish I like, w-. but then I don't sleep very well because I'm constantly trying to wake up to remember the <laughs> dreams in case there's like a genius idea in there. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we missing? Oh my, lost in the dreams. It's but so it's, sad. It's funny because I really uh, yesterday I had like a shoe that a shoe that actually I saw in my head and um. So yeah, it's fun. It's like a the type of thing where you know you just when you want inspiration and you want you know you're you're sitting there in front of the drawing board and you're like, what are we doing this season? You know, there's times when I'm like, ah, you get stuck, and then other times where. And then the times that you're not really looking and you're just kind of like with family or friends or on vacation, like you get all these ideas. Um, so other places I try to go to uh, the Premier Vision, the fabric show in Paris. I get really inspired by fabrication and textiles, um, seeing all the mills from Europe and, um, you know, all their new innovative uh, fabric qualities and techniques and manipulations. I also love embroidery. Um, my grandfather had a lace mill in Tehran uh, in the 70s. And um, I've shared this story before. So if anyone's heard this already, sorry if I'm boring you. But um, he had a lace Never. mill. <laughs> he had a lace <laughs> mill in the 70s and um, pre-revolution. And then right before the revolution, he left. Um, and he actually left the mill behind. But I always try to find a way to incorporate embroideries and uh, keep pure and lace in the collection um, as a homage to my family's heritage. Oh, I love that. Well, you mentioned a couple, 
somewhat. Um, sometimes you're inspired by people, um, which is interesting. But tell me who you're designing for. Who is your shopper? Has she been with you for the long haul? There's definitely, um, you know, definitely a uh, a customer that's been with the brand for a very long time. I think for me, it's, you know, something that I take a lot of pride in with Simkai is that we really try to design a collection that is very inclusive and, you know, brings people together and, you know, trying as hard as we can to have something for um different types of women, women that like more coverage, women that like to be sexy, women that like to show their skin, women that like to be covered. Um, and because, you know, we are so diversified in um, the product and the end use, we really are able to kind of uh, tick something and have something for everybody. Um, you know, even just some of my favorite moments are being in store and seeing like a mother and daughter come in together and be able to like to shop and try things on together and seeing like you know, two people bonding and sharing a, a, an exciting moment and, and expressing themselves through fashion together and um, or even just like friends coming into the store together and trying things on. And, um, you know, sh- it's like it's like sharing like a, a loaf of bread in a way where you just like with the people you love. And um, so, yeah, for me, it's really about um, bringing people together and not, you know, alienating anyone and trying to get, you know, through silhouette, through fabric, um, to try to, you know, have something for most people. So nice. Well, I love, I know you spend a lot of time in your stores. Let's talk about your stores a little bit and why you value that time, why your customer values the time and how many stores are we talking here? (laughs) Um, Yeah, so we have four stores right now, plus our online. So five points of direct distribution. Um, Something about me that's, um, I love being in store. I I started working in retail when I was uh, 14 years old. I, I worked in a, um, a sweater outlet. Um, my neighbor uh, ran a, a manufacturing company for knitwear. Um, and on Sundays, the factory turned into an outlet. And when he told me this, I was like, oh my God, I love clothes. I love fashion. I'd love to come. And he's like, well, you can help me work the outlet on Sundays. So I'd be there. And I you know, started kind of just like working with people who would come in and just like sell them sweaters, like literally out of a box. So that was my first kind of like step into fashion. And then I started working um, at a local boutique um, for, you know, through high school. And it really, really just was so rewarding to be able to like build a relationship with um, someone that came in and needed, you know, needed an outfit to, um, you know, to feel confident about an interview they were going to or to, um, if they had a date schedule, they wanted to look good for the date. And, you know, being able to work with them and, and to get them ready to feel like confident enough to like, okay, I'm going to do this. Like, I like the way I look. I feel confident. I'm ready to do this. And like, that is like, it's really therapeutic. And, you know, sometimes I feel selfish because I, I do get so, such a reward from, uh, I feel so rewarded from, you know, that experience and, and being able to um, style someone and, and, and see them try something. Um but yeah, so I love being in store and that's really something that, um, you know, gives me the most satisfaction. Even now we have our store in Southampton, our store, we have a store in Beverly Hills, a store in Soho and a store in Dallas. And whenever I'm in the store, um, I just really love to be hands-on. And, you know, some, some last night I was in our Beverly Hills store and um, someone was like, do you work here? I was like, yeah, I work here. Like, what do you need? <laughs> and they were like, oh, can I get this shoe in a size, you know, whatever, 38. And of course, I like ran to the back to grab it for them. And I guess when I was gone, someone told them that I was the founder and the designer. And, I, you know, I just got on my on my knee to like help her put the shoe on. And she's like, no, 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 get off the floor. Like, I feel bad that you're like on your knees, like, you know, putting the shoe on. I'm like, this is what I love to do. Like, I and I and I get it. Like, maybe she felt like, I don't, whatever, she felt embarrassed, but she shouldn't have. But that's what I love to do. I love to dress people. I love to give them that experience when they come in. And it's just like, at this point, doing it since I'm 14, it's like in my blood. And I'm, I'm you know, when I'm in the store, I'm at the service of the client. So um, that's really what satisfies me. I mean, you're the <laughs> best. The fact that that makes you feel selfish and it's like the ultimate <laughs> designer shopping experience. Hello. Um, <laughs> anyway, best of both worlds. But are more stores coming? Um, yes, I th- we're seeing such great um, we're seeing such great traction with the stores. Um, it's one of our like fastest growing and and um, 
up, upward trending businesses. So it's definitely in our in our um, pipeline to open more stores. And um, you know, for me at this point, I I was thinking about you know wanting to have that touch point with the stores and being able to visit them. Next week, I go to the Hamptons, um, you know, to be in store and to do an event there. And, you know, I, I always want to be able to, as much as possible, obviously, as you continue to grow. Um, it's harder to be in every store, you know, all the time. But um, especially at the beginning, I think it's really important to um, make sure that you set the tone for um, the customer service standards and the way the collection is presented and the way that, you know, people are experiencing the clothes and being styled and so for me to be able to be in the stores and um, train the staff and work with the staff and the stylists on, um, you know, just how to give them the Simca experience and the customer the Simca experience is, is important to me at this stage. Definitely. Well, are a majority of your sales still happening in um, like through retail partners? And are you also experiencing maybe... I don't know, a shift in how you think of a department store versus a specialty store. I know um, a lot of brands are seeing a lot of great traction and, and promise in specialty store channels. What's happening there? I'm like, I love specialty stores so much. It's it's another one of my passions. I think that, you know, something that I see um, in specialty stores is like really the person that's coming in, like the owner of the store is equally responsible for, you know, paying the bills working the floor, maintaining the relationship with the customer, doing the buying. Sometimes they're unpacking boxes, like they're literally doing everything. And they'll come into to our showroom in New York and see the collection. And they're literally thinking, I'm buying this in a size six for my customer, Judy. I'm buying this in my customer, you know, in a size five for Michelle. Like they know who their customer is and they have an ability to like really understand their customer and bring them the product that's going to work best for them. And then they're also, they see it through. They'll make sure that product, you know, goes to that person. Where sometimes with department stores, you know, the buyer is like in an office, she's buying like 70 brands and, you know, she doesn't have that, you know, she doesn't necessarily know exactly who the customer is. So I think that the specialty stores are really at an advantage because they do have that direct relationship with the customer. They know what, you know, they know their customers by name and by face and their body type. So, um, and I think that the customers are really excited about that, you know, curation of product that's like f- happening for them. And that's like, you know, they're, they're coming and they're seeing some kind, they're bringing them what they need of the collection. So, and I think that, you know, at post COVID, um, you know, there was so much of that, like digital experiences and, you know, e-commerce booming. And I think that after, you know, COVID people did, were excited to, um, return to in-person and experience, um, stores, you know, and, and they missed it. And I think that we're still seeing that um, they're excited to come in and they're excited to have an experience. And I know for even myself, like I love, I still love shopping in person because you can touch and feel the clothes and um, yeah, you can try it on and you can see things and feel things, especially if you're a tactile person. Um, yes. So. You and me both. <laughs> All about IRL shopping. And speaking of comebacks, like Talk to me about New York Fashion Week. Those who listen to the show know I'm a Fashion Week nut. <laughs> Excited to have you back. Where did you go and what brought you back? Um, yes, yeah, so I took a year off from, from Fashion Week. Um, I think that, you know, one of the things about the shows and Fashion Week for me is that um, I feel that it's really a labor of love and the team, you know, it, it's a really um, it's a really big project, like the whole team um, you know, really gets very excited and we work really hard. It's a huge, um, time and energy. Um, it requires a lot of time and energy, I'll say. Um, so, you know, with this year, when we opened the stores, this year was a big like retail push for us. And, you know, I wanted to make sure that I could be in store as much as possible. Um, really think about the merchandising for each territory and think about the products that, you know, each, store needed and, and, you know, optimizing the products that we brought online. Um, so I really wanted the team and myself to be super focused on the merchandising strategy for each store and also being able to be in store and work with customers. And now that we're seeing that we, you know, have a good handle and a good, a good, you know, grip on that, um, 
And I really did miss New York Fashion Week not doing it. It was kind of like intermittent fasting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, I was just like craving it and, and I miss it. And, you know, being in store, actually, I've heard so many clients just say, oh, are you doing a show? We want to come to your show. And um, I felt that, you know, being so focused on the clients and, and meeting their their needs and, and, you know, being there for them as well. Um, you know, I really wanted to do a show so I could have them there and, and give them that experience as well. Yeah, I like your approach. It's like, we're not going to do it just because that's what you do. Like, it's going to work for you this season. It, it speaks to your goals and your priorities. I know um, at one point you showed at Miami Fashion Week and you were showing resort and you were showing swimwear because that was a big, I don't know, push for you. Sydney Fashion Week at one point. I don't know. You can tell me why that worked for you. But yes, is that kind of what, what it's about? It's about leaning into the opportunity as it makes sense, as it corresponds with your goals. I think definitely leading into opportunities and and seeing if, you know, opportunities are presented to us and, you know, things come up. I think trying, experimenting. Um, I'm all about experimenting and, you know, trying different things. I, I love to, you know, even in, in, in meetings, if, you know, someone has an idea, I'm like, let's test it. Let's try it. Like, why say no, just because we haven't done it that way before. And, you know, let, let's see, let the data, you know, let us know if this is a good decision. Obviously, if I think it's, you know, not brand adjacent or it doesn't, you know, make sense. But usually I'm always open to testing things. So when the Sydney opportunity came our way, I love Australia and we have a really nice um, distribution and, and, you know, we have a nice presence in Australia. So when the opportunity came to present at Sydney Fashion Week, I was excited about it. It was a little bit a few years ago. And then Miami, we we have been um, this like, you know, really great swim business. I love, um, I love designing swimwear because I think that, you know, being in a swimsuit is, I feel very vulnerable when I put a swimsuit on and going, <laughs> I think a lot yes. of people, you know, putting a swimsuit on can make you feel vulnerable. Um, so I really want to kind of take that and, and find a way to, you know, bring confidence to, to putting a swimsuit on and having the right layers to like cover your arms when you're going to the pool bar or to like, you know, cover your hips if you're going to sit down for lunch and, you know, finding those ways to be like confident poolside and in the pool, like through ruching or even like lining some of our swimsuits in, you know, a certain fabric that might help kind of smooth out your skin and um, your body. So, um, but still being very fashion forward, modern, um, sensual, um, and like, you know, with an attention to detail. So circling back to fashion week, can you give us any teasers? Like what can we expect this season? Yeah. So this season is very interesting. Um, I was really inspired by fabric and by materials. Um, and after I started pulling all these fabrics, it reminded me of this picture um, of my mother on her wedding day. Um, and I, I just want to put this out there. This is not going to be like a bridal collection by any means, but um, it is, you know, my grand. she wore a dress that um, the fabric was made by my grandfather. And, um, you know, it's, I don't even want to say too much about it, but um, it just, when I looked at everything as we were putting it together and the fabrics that I was gravitating towards, it really reminded me of this picture um, that was sitting in our dining room growing up. It was like kind of, we had a piano in our dining room. Um, sounds kind of weird, but it was like off to the side and there was like this little picture of my mother on her on her wedding day on the piano. And I just like looked at this picture every day growing up. And I just like, I was like, I texted my mom. I was like, mom, can you send me that picture that was on the piano? And she sent it to me. And I was like, yes, this is like, this is kind of it. And um, I don't know. I like, it's so, it's so strange. Like in the last few years, like I would say in the last year, year and a half, I just like wake up missing my parents so much. My parents live in New York and I live in LA. And um, I like, I don't know if it's because like now I have my own kids, but um, I miss, miss them so much every morning. And, um, and, you know, I know that like time is so precious with them and I, I really want to, you know, we just went to Sicily together and I just, you know, I was definitely like, I would say maybe had a stage growing up where I was a bit more rebellious and like wasn't listening to them and like doing everything <laughs> wrong and, you know, a problem child. But I think what that now, <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting how like at certain points you're, you're, um, yeah. So I, so this is, this collection is a tribute to my mom and, um, 
this this picture that I that had was on my piano growing up. <laughs> oh my gosh, I wonder if we're at the same age. You're, what you're saying, I'm so relating to about the valuable time with the folks. Um, <laughs> but would you say it's the most um, most personal collection to date? Do you typically have a very personal inspo going in? Not typically, no. Um, yeah, not typically. I think so. But there's also. Um, we might, um, yeah, there's there's a few other surprises. I don't want to give too much away because I want everyone to stay tuned to see what it is. But it's definitely um, going to be like modern and, you know, very aligned with what we've, we've, we've been doing and what the Simkai customer is looking for, um, for us, from us for. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Tune in. Um, <laughs> speaking of, um, I mean, Miami, you have a large shopper base in Florida. I know, but I also know, I, are you kind of pushing to be more international uh, or have you always had a large presence like in the UK? I know you recently did an amazing shop and shop at Selfridges and um, I don't know what's, what's going on internationally. Yeah. International has actually been um, a really exciting market for us. We did just open a, a shop in Selfridges. Um, we also have a really nice business um, in the Middle East. So we have a shop that we opened at in Rubaiyat um, in the Middle East. And um, we have a corner shop at Harrods. Um, and we're working on a few other ones. I think that for us, international is so exciting. And, and again, there is like a different, I would say, um, a different customer there. I think it's always fun to, to think about, you know, how people shop in different regions and different areas. And that's something that, you know, always excites me. It's like a, um, you know, that, that type of understanding and, and um, the c- cracking of the code, I would say. Like, I think every region has like a code to crack in terms of what they're looking for from the brand or how they dress. And, you know, certain territories are really like dressy and get really dressed up for events and certain you know, territories go to weddings more casually. And, you know, so every region has um, their nuance in, you know, the way that they they dress for occasions and dress for um, things. So it's really been a fun challenge to um, learn about each market and how to assort the product um, differently for each one of those mar- markets. 15 years in, would you say your company is basically a well-oiled machine in that you're kind of nimble. Like you said, you can cater, localize the assortment for the market. And I know we talked about pandemic and kind of the the different trends that were like, I right. don't know, waving in and out. Talk to me about your ability, ability to do that and what's happened over the last couple of years. Yeah, that's like the, I call it the swing of the pendulum because, you know, during COVID, it was like you couldn't sell dresses, you couldn't sell like high heels. You know, people were very much like stay at home, focus on knitwear and focus on, you know, we did like a sweatpant drop. We did, you know, we made some masks out of out of fabric that we had. Um, and that was kind of what was driving the business, like sweatpants and, and sweaters and knitwear and, and masks. But um, as things started opening up and, and people were able to, you know, go out, we saw like a really crazy demand for dresses and metallics and like revenge dressing was was what we called it. Um, and I think that what's interesting about this moment and where we are right now is I think that it feels a little bit like the pendulum is kind of settling and it's not swinging so hard. Um, people are excited about, you know, dresses for occasions, but are also like, you know, the sweatpants, they, the, the, hundred pairs of sweatpants they bought during COVID are probably like worn out at this point and they're ready for like a new, you know, clean set that they can wear when they're traveling or, you know, hanging out um, yes. with friends this time, hopefully. <laughs> Not alone. <laughs> hanging out with God friends. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think that it's interesting. And I think that for us, we're seeing, you know, for me as a designer, it's always exciting when the customer is open to a great dress and a great pair of, of high heels, but also, um, you know, a cool sweater. And it's nice. It, like there's not one specific product that um, it's all about one thing. It's nice that it's diversified for, at this moment. Are you the full owner of the business? Do you have investors? And and is that a possibility moving forward, even maybe selling the company one day? Um, so, yeah, so I, um, the, the business is privately held. We have not taken on any outside investment. Um, and, you know, this, this business has really kind of, you know, been started from the ground up, um, no outside funding. It was very organically grown. And, you know, I am definitely open to the idea. We, you know, 
talked about it. And I think that it, at some point, um, you know, to grow to the next level, it could be something that we would entertain. At the same time, um, we're also very happy and, and, and you know, just go, moving along and growing the business organically. So I think not no, but, you know, I think it would have to be the right um, partner and the right investor that is aligned on our brand values and, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, tell me what's challenging you now. And I got, I have to ask, like, this may not be the challenge, but have you been kind of unscathed or were there some lessons learned in terms of, well, there's kind of, there's a lot of movement happening on the wholesale front and on the um, marketplace front um, with the consolidation of Neiman and Sachs and others shutting down. Um, like, how do you feel about that? Have you maybe changed your, I don't know, deal con approach to contracts, what have you? So, yeah, I think it's, it's been really interesting. I think in general, um, the, the market and like the, the retailer landscape has, has been very interesting. Um, you know, I think that from our end, we've just been as mindful as possible to, um, diversify our outlets. And I think that having the retail stores and, um, you know, also having such a strong specialty store business, I would say that our specialty store business and our wholesale and our department store business is probably equally in size. So um, we are, you know, constantly thinking about how to diversify um, our, you know, our outlets and like, and the people that we work with so that, you um, it's not that the rug will be pulled from underneath us if something is to go down. So um, right. I do love, you know, department stores. I love, you know, shopping at Neiman's and, and Saks as well. So um, I hope it works out and it could be very cool, the merger and, um, you know, just bringing things together. And um, But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens. And I think that, you know, I always look at these changes as opportunity and um, for the future. And I'm excited to see how, the retail landscape evolves going forward. Yes. Any challenges involved with um, operating out of LA or is it just a benefit? I would say um, challenges and um, benefits. I would say that in New York, you know, we were based in the garment district and we had like such so much access to like trims and fabric and buttons and, you know, even just seeing clothes from like cash and carry stores. And here we're, you know, in LA and we really operate um, to our own, you know, be to our own drum and we're in our little bubble. Um, I would say from a challenge perspective, um, I would say that it's, you know, it's not always easy finding talent, um, even like seamstresses or, you know, the design team. We have a really strong, amazing design team, but it wasn't easy to find them. And, you know, a lot of them did relocate from New York or um, other, you know, other areas, but it is not easy finding um, fashion, like product fashion, um, especially with um, ele like a, like elevated taste level or um, knowledge for like high end construction. Um, but we have an amazing team right now, which I, I you know I'm really grateful for and um, consider family. But that was definitely a challenge. I think that also being in LA, you do have um, because there isn't so much around us. Um, you know, it is, I would say there's probably less turnover than we had in, you know, New York. I think that in New York, um, being in the garment district, there's so much, there's so many fashion brands and um, there's a lot of options for for someone like where to go. And I think that you just, in LA, there's something about like, you kind of like sink your heels in and get comfortable. And um, yeah, and it's, there's a laid back um, energy about being in LA that, you know, in New York, it, it it's, it's a little bit different. Like we, I say we very much operate like a New York company, like, you know, the people here have that like New York hustle and, um, you know, that, that passion. Um, but at the same time, there is like an ease. We have to take a lot of meetings outdoors and, um, we do like our design meetings, um, outside on our patio. So, um, there is something very like West Coast feeling about working here and it's nice. Nice. How would you describe the state of where you're, where you are in the industry um, in terms of like, well, for a minute there, luxury, booming, thriving, and now it's um, slowing down, but also there's fast fashion on the lower tier as like 
driving billions of dollars despite all this sustainability <laughs> talk. Nobody cares. They just want cheap stuff. Um, but no, how do you feel? And, and in terms of your placement, like, is it more stable? Is it just as um, erratic as any other market? I would say um, for the most part, um, our business has been, pr- been pretty stable and, and we, you know, we are actually, you know, growing. The business is still growing. We are up to last year, which is great. Um, across the board. But um, I would say, I think that for us, we we sit in an interesting place where um, the luxury customer will pick up one of our, our garments and be like, oh, wow, like I expected this to be, have another zero on on the price tag, or I expect this to be more expensive. And um, I've, I've literally heard that in store where people are like, wow, you should make, this could be more expensive. Or, you know, I did, wow, this is like so much less than I thought it would be. Um, so I think for them, you know, if they are being a bit more conservative and more thoughtful with their purchases, I think that they can come to Simkai because they feel that the brands and the product has um, is made with you know the same attention to detail or construction or fabrications as you know a luxury product. Um, that's something that I take a lot of pride in, really making sure that like all of our fabrics are you know soft on the skin, our like our finishings are. Um, well constructed, the way that the, you know, the way that we use lace when uh, we're sewing a garment, we try to like delete the seams and make things feel as seamless and as like beautiful and integrated as possible. So I think that from a designer customer standpoint, they can come in and they really see the quality and craftsmanship. And for them, you know, the price is is attractive if if they're being more conscious. And then I think that, um, so from that, from that point of view, I do think that maybe that has worked in our advantage. Um, and then I think that with fast fashion, it's, you know, they might, I've seen a lot of, you know, different, I don't want to say names, but a lot of different brands knock us, knock us off or copy some of our designs. And, you know, as much as they can try, the, they're not going to spend that attention to detail. And, you know, at the prices, they won't get that same fabric or that, you know, the construction, the seams might be janky or, you know, the fabric might not be exactly constructed the same. So, um, yeah, I think that we have, we've kind of like created our own little niche of, um, and our customers appreciate what we do and they love, you know, the product. So yeah, we'll see. (laughs) We'll see. You're doing something right. We're trying. We're trying. (laughs) Yes. What more can we expect this year? Back of fashion week. Maybe some more stores. What did I miss? I forget. <laughs> I would say like, you know, for us, I would say right now, our some of our, we're seeing a lot of really nice momentum in our handbag and footwear business, which is really exciting. We launched that, um, I would say like a year and a half ago and we're seeing um, so much success there. We have um, this one bag specifically, there are two bags specifically called the uh, Bridget and the Monet bag, which um, kind of put us on the map in terms of the handbag, in the handbag space. Um, and, you know, we've sold out of them like multiple times, but, you know, through that we've acquired a handbag customer and now they're, you know, excited about trying new handbag shapes. So I'm really excited about, um, some of the developments that we have in the pipeline for handbags. It's really been like a focus point for us and, um, lots of new ideas and innovation and things coming out there. And then footwear as well, um, we launched that, um, I would say two years ago and we're really seeing that we found, um, some shapes that, people really like. And I'm excited to continue to build on that. I think that whenever you're launching a new category, you know, you have your ideas of what the customer wants, but at the end of the day, they need to decide if they actually want it or not. So it takes a second to really like understand like what, what is, what they're into. And I think that now that we have um, more data and just more, you know, more, more time and more um, experience, I think that it's, it's exciting because we've seen some promising, um, traction across those categories. And so that's exciting for me. And then also with menswear, we launched menswear, um, last year, uh, at the beginning of the year. And, um, it's something that has always been something that I wanted to do. I actually, no one, no one knows this, but I did, this is the second time I did a menswear brand. The first time I did men's for Simkai, the brand was Jonathan Simkai at the time. And I designed a full on men's collection made the samples, but then put it in a box and decided not to put it out there. What? Yes. So um, <laughs> this is a, a second. a lot of work, Jonathan. It is a lot of work, but um, we did a whole men's collection 
um, back when we were still in New York, actually, and decided to, you know, put it away. I, I kept some of the pieces and, and wore them, so it wasn't a complete waste. But um, I, so this is the second time that we're doing men's, the first time that we actually put it out, and um, and we're seeing really nice traction. We um, it's it's stocked by a bunch of really great stores, and we have it on simkai.com as well, and um, it's in our boutiques. So it's fun for me because you know, I've had so many, you know, just guy friends and my my brother and my my dad always saying like, when are you going to make something for us? And um, so it's nice to be able to to dress the guys in my life and to dress myself in Simkai. Um, and yeah, that's an exciting, something that I'm excited about as well. And <laughs> it's awesome. I, I mean, have you dabbled in the rental resale space? I would just, I would think that your dresses would rent like hot do you say rent like hotcakes like you say sell like hotcakes anyway, right. I think it would be popular <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're actually on rent the runway um oh, we do great. have some styles on rent the runway um and yeah it works really well for them yeah is it a customer acquisition tool for you kind of people find you they fall in love it's a great thing because you get a lot of feedback I think the rent the run Rent the Runway customer, it's a tongue twister. Uh, Rent the <laughs> Runway customer is really engaged. And, you know, there's a lot of like feedback that um, they give other renters. And we also use some of that feedback to also hindsight on like fit and product and to see what, you know, people are gravitating towards. So it is really interesting from um, a data perspective and, and, and customer feedback perspective. Um and yeah, I think that sometimes people just want to dress to wear once and they don't want to wear it more than once. And, you know, I think it's a perfect solution rather than buying something. And, you know, we always talk about this in office, but closet real estate is a really big deal. And, you know, sometimes... Especially in New York. <laughs> especially, And my closet is tiny. Uh, I actually have a rack in my... Um, I have a rack in my uh, bedroom that's actually blocking off my husband's side of the bed. And he's like, if you want me to sleep in this bed, you need to move this rack somewhere else. I'm like, okay, okay. I I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. So (laughs) Don't make uh, you choose. (laughs) No, tomorrow it's my project. I'm moving the rack out of our room so that he feels like he has a space. Um, He's Bad love. (laughs) Well, I just want him in bed with me. So it's um, (laughs) the the clothes can go. The clothes can go. Um, But yeah, closet real estate is a real... A real deal. For so. sure. I mean, last question, because we had a little prep call for this and I just found out you're such an interesting fellow. I mean, what are you doing this weekend? What do you do for fun? <laughs> um, what am I doing for fun? Yeah. So this weekend is actually a closet cleanup day. Um, Saturday is going to be all closet cleanup and then Sunday is going to be a pool day. Um, yeah, I was in Montecito last weekend. I actually just came back from Europe. Uh, my husband and I, I did, it was a crazy adventure. I did Milan, I did Paris for, and Milan for fashion week. Then I flew to the Hamptons cause I wanted to be in the store, um, for an event. And then I flew back to, uh, Paris for the fabric show. And then from there I went to Amalfi, um, and then Sicily for a wedding with the kids and my husband met me there. So like just a nice, like European travel. It was a, it was a little long, um, and packing for that was a disaster. <laughs> no doubt. Do you, are you a light packer, heavy packer? I'm a he- I'm a heavy packer. Um, to be honest, okay. I say I like I go back and forth. Sometimes like I'm taking nothing. Like it, it goes back. It's literally like one time I'll pack like two huge bags, and one, and then the next time I'll just pack nothing because I'm so traumatized by <laughs> either not having anything to wear or having too many things I've never worn. So. Um, yeah, I'm actually up. My next trip will be a one bag, one small bag trip. Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and then last weekend I did um, a trip to Montecito. Montecito is so beautiful this time of year. Um, it's kind of like, it's funny because I grew up in New York and I always, you know, I love going to the Hamptons. And be, when I was in New York, I spent a lot of summers in the Hamptons. And living in LA, I've been trying to figure out like, what is the Hamptons of the West Coast? And um it's not quite Montecito or Santa Barbara, but um, it's kind of like the next best thing. So, um. Yes, <laughs> I would guess Montecito. Yeah. But I haven't spent a lot of time there, so you know better than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you. You're my last 
meeting of the week. We'll call it a meeting. Um, But yeah, thanks for getting this in before the weekend. It was so fun to chat with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Talk soon. And I'll see you at the show. Ah, I hope so. All right. Bye. Lots of love. That's all for this episode. Our theme music is by Otis McDonald. If you liked this episode, be sure to share it with someone else you think would. Thanks for listening to the Glossy Podcast.